Hey, Marilyn. The iPad is up here. Do you need that up there, back there?
mercy. Lord, you are such a good and loving God. And we want the world to see that. We want the world to know you as we know you. But we also want to know you more. So during this time, reveal yourself to us in fresh and new ways. Help us to see and understand you. Help us to embrace the mystery of things that we can't understand. All the while knowing that you were there and that you were here with us. We love you and we thank you for this moment. We thank you for the family of faith that you've created and the tribe of us that gather today. And we thank you for the prayer your son taught us to say, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, as we come to our time of offering, we recognize that all of you have been so faithful in your giving that has allowed the ministries of this church to continue um, through difficult times, and we're very blessed by that. The loose offering today will go to our Wesley Foundations around the state. We're getting a taste of, of how they, they are affecting lives of those young people. And you can hear their heart and their excitement for Christ. This is one of the biggest um, grounds of, of changing lives through Jesus. And that's what we're all about, isn't it? And so um, the loose offering to, that's taken here in the sanctuary today will go towards that um, toward the Wesley Foundations on college campuses. We will also, uh, we have our blessing that we'll be going to Bluff, uh, Moss, Bluff Moss in Louisiana. We are continuing to take up an offering for them. They were the United Methodist Church that was damaged by Hurricane Laura in um, that crisis time. And so um, we are continuing to take up a love offering for them, um, which we will send to them at the end of the year. So we're thankful for each of you for the blessings that you give um, for the ministries. So would you pray with me? Oh, gracious God, thank you for the opportunities that you give us to give back to others. We just pray a blessing on each person that is here and on each that may receive the benefits of our blessings and, as we give to others. So, Lord, continue to bless our Wesley Foundations around the state. Bless Moss Prof, United Methodist Church, and their time of recovery. And bless all, all who need to know you, Jesus. We thank you for participating in your ministry in this world. Amen. So it appears that we're having some technical difficulties. Oh.
brought to us by a student named Flower Hughes at Campus to City Wesley. Uh, and their text for this morning comes out of the first chapter of John. Now, I'll be reading this, this famous passage uh, out of a, a newer translation called the Common English Bible. Here now, a reading of John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light, but the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The Word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hey everyone, my name is Flower Hughes. I am a student at Campus to City Wesley here in Jacksonville, Florida, and I am so, so, so excited to be bringing the message today. I really um, feel like COVID has taken a lot from us, but then there are also these incredible opportunities that have arisen because we are all remote, and so getting to be in so many places at once is pretty amazing and, and really a, a testament to modern technology. Uh, let me give you a little bit of background on who exactly I am. I am a fellow at Campus to City Wesley. Um, basically, I, I do kind of odd jobs as well as um, some ministry initiatives here at, at CCW. Um, if you don't know about CCW, we are located in Northeast Florida. We serve kind of the Jacksonville, St. Augustine area. Um, our campuses include uh, Jacksonville University, uh, Edward Waters College, University of North Florida, which is where I go, and a couple of other ones including St. John's River State College and Florida State College at Jacksonville. I um, am currently a student at UNF. I'm in my senior year. I study public health and American Sign Language. Uh, I've been a part of CCW since my freshman year at UNF, and through my involvement, I have kind of explored a call to ministry, and after I graduate from UNF, I intend to attend seminary and earn a master's in divinity, um, hopefully going on to full-time ministry in the UMC. I'm a cat mom of two, and I live with my mom, who is my best friend. In addition to my passion for ministry, I also love art and cooking, and I've taken full advantage of the whole theme of quarantine baking. Um, I'm just really, really excited to be here, and I feel really fortunate to bring this message. So we're talking about John 1, a couple verses from John 1 today. Um, and as we've moved through the Christmas season, I feel like we've been thinking a lot about birth, and that's really what I wanna focus on today. This whole idea of the word becoming flesh and like that transition point from God to baby. As a 23 year old, I am surrounded by birth all the time. While I am not having children anytime soon, I'm sorry to my extended relatives, you probably are wondering when I'm gonna settle down and have kids, uh, not anytime soon. Um, I'm still surrounded by people my age getting married, having children, and even at the beginning of, the, of 2020, our assist, uh, associate director gave birth to her second child. So I feel like this year has weirdly been shrouded in birth for me. And all this birth really does make me think about Jesus' birth. You know, what was it like? Uh, was Mary's labor really hard? or was giving birth to the divine easy? 
We believe that Mary was somewhere between 12 and 16 years old when she gave birth to, Mary, to Jesus, and honestly, the odds were not in her favor. As somebody who studies public health, one of the biggest measurements of the health of a society is infant and maternal mortality. And in the first century, the odds were not good. While it's hard to pin down exactly what the rates were, we can estimate that Mary faced some of the same challenges and barriers and worries and risks that people in the developing world face today. Many, many mothers Mary's age and Mary's time would not survive childbirth, and many more children wouldn't survive to their first birthday. I wonder if Mary thought about this as she was carrying Jesus and as she gave birth, wondering if her life would be cut short by bringing this new one into the world. While we generally think of birth as the beginning of life, it is surprisingly fraught with death. As I hold this idea of Mary in labor and Jesus' birth, I also think of my cousin who recently gave birth to her first son, who due to a congenital disease died shortly after he was born. I think about my friend from high school who recently posted on Instagram that she was expecting her first child, only to post three days later that she had had a miscarriage and lost the pregnancy. I think about all the motherless children and the childless mothers who have lost their loved ones due to COVID-19. I think about all of the mothers going through their prenatal appointments alone and giving birth in empty birthing wards because having visitors is a health risk. I think about everyone who wonders now what kind of world are our children growing up in or going to grow up in. I hold all of these thoughts alongside the Christmas story and I wonder why? Why did God have to become a baby to save the world? I think God was sending us a message here that this world matters. Mary's birthing pain matters. My cousin's son matters. My friend's grief matters. The loss from COVID-19 matters. All those laboring alone matter. Our children matter. Jesus was born, he lived, and he died because our births, our lives, our deaths matter to God. But Jesus also came with a promise that resurrection is as real for us as it was for him. Moving into the scripture today from John 1, verse 14 speaks of Jesus' birth essentially prophesying when the word becomes flesh. It says, the word became flesh and made his home among us. John 1 tells us a lot of things about this word, that this word was both with God and was God in the beginning, that everything was made through this word and that this word would become flesh to bring light and life to the world. To visualize this in preparation, I actually made a flowchart that talked about every single interconnection of the word and life and flesh in these verses. But in addition to being enough of a nerd to make a flowchart about Bible verses, I'm also a huge biology enthusiast. And when we think about human birth, human pregnancy, it's absolutely insane. The fact that humans make other humans by growing them inside our internal organs is entirely preposterous to me. The other fact that doesn't really make sense when we think about these broader trends of biology is exactly how helpless human babies are. Sure, some animals, like kittens for an example, are born with their eyes closed and don't open them until many weeks into their life. And hatchling birds are entirely featherless and can't regulate their own body temperature. But when we think about humans, we can't even lift our own heads. Our bones are not fully developed. Most of it is cartilage that will eventually become bone later in our life. Our skin is thin and sensitive, and our immune systems 
are practically non-existent. The only protection we get is from our mother's immune system, which will fade over time. The only thing that we have on kittens is that we can poop on our own. We are completely helpless as infants. So why did God arrive to save the world as this helpless, squishy, vulnerable child? I really think that God was just showing God's nature. Over and over again in the Bible, we are told stories of the underdog, the forgotten, the seemingly useless, being lifted to glory. David, a young shepherd boy, becomes a war hero and a king. Moses, a child of the in-between, not quite an Egyptian, not quite an Israelite, becomes the liberator of the Jewish people. Rahab, a prostitute, becomes a paragon of virtue for sheltering the spies of Israel in the Promised Land. The story of Jesus being a lowly and helpless baby is not a deviation from the stories that we've been told about God. Instead, it is right in line with the message that God brings to us that speaks to our lowliness, that speaks to our helplessness and meets us in those low and helpless places. I'm currently studying public health at the University of North Florida and wow, 2020 has been quite the year to be studying such a topic. I often tell people that I know just enough to understand how bad the pandemic is, but not enough to actually help anyone. I feel totally helpless. And utter helplessness is not a unique feeling to me in this year. We're trying to stay home and wear our masks and wash our hands and social distance as much as we possibly can, but no individual can stop a deadly virus. We're like infants in this world of pandemic, unable to even lift our own heads. God is not only for us in those times, but God is actually with us because God came to earth and became as helpless as we are. God chose to become that helpless as an infant. So when we ask, what is the significance of the incarnation of God as a human being, we have to think back to how helpless God was in the form of a baby. There was nothing that God could do to take care of God's self in that moment. Of course, some sort of divine intervention, I'm sure, could be used, but I really believe that God chose to be in that helpless position to show how much God wants to meet us where we are. God is telling us that our births, our lives, and our deaths matter to God. And in the person of Jesus, we are also given this promise that our life isn't just this three-part act, but our lives will actually follow the same pattern that Jesus' did. Jesus was born, Jesus lived, Jesus died, and Jesus resurrected. And just as Jesus did, we have the promise that we will live again. So in these times where we are helpless and vulnerable and fearful, I encourage us all to remember the tiny baby who was born from a teenage mother in probably a cold, dirty, smelly barn that was the savior of the world. And if that savior could be that helpless in those moments, that message to us is that there is a next step from our helplessness. We don't live here. We don't live in this time of pain and helplessness. This is temporary. And we have a new promise that our lives are not just birth, life, death. But there is a fourth part, that resurrection in the person of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for hearing my message today. God bless.
is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. Defender behind me. Defender behind me. I won't fear. I won't fear. I'm filled with no. My cup is overflowing. My cup's overflowing. Yeah. No weapon can harm me. And I won't fear. I won't fear. See how. Just 
Hi, my name is Daniela Conde and I'm a sophomore at UF studying Communication Sciences and Disorders. Hi, my name is Alex Joyner and I am a sophomore at UF studying Marketing. Hello, my name is Heather Pankost and I am one of the co-directors here at the Gator Wesley Foundation, the campus ministry at UF in Santa Fe. I am part of the leadership team at Gator Wesley. I currently serve as a residential staff member at Gator Wesley. Obviously, this has been a very different fall for all of us in the campus ministry world, like in the local church. We have really need to adjust and be creative with how we lived out our mission. On behalf of Gator Wesley and all of the United Methodist Campus Ministries, we would like to thank Bishop Carter for the invitation to share and worship with you today, and also thank each of you for joining us in this worship experience. It has been a blessing and honor to work together across the campus ministries and with our students to prepare this for you. We are so thankful for the prayers and encouragement of our alumni, local churches, families, and the conference who have supported us in our ministry to college students. We literally could not do this vital work without you. Thank you from all of us here for all that you do to support the United Methodist Campus Ministries across the Florida Conference. Although we serve different campuses and cheer for different football teams, we share the same mission of loving students in the name of Jesus, creating community where everyone can be welcomed and find a home, and walking alongside of students as they discern their calling from God. I am so thankful to have found a home and genuine community at Gator Wesley. Each of our campus ministries see themselves as an extension of the work that you do in the lives of young people in the local church. We are your campus ministries, and we are so blessed to be in partnership with our local churches. Thank you again for taking the time to worship with us, and, and we, we hope, hope that you have, have a Merry very Christmas. Merry Christmas. I hope this has been a, a time for you of of one feeling optimistic about the young people in our church as you hear from them, hear from their heart, to see what our apportionments, uh, a lot of times it, they feel like they go off and you don't know what, this is where our apportionments go, is to create these ministries. And as we heard from Flower, the reminder of what Christmas is, that we have truly celebrated the victory of knowing that we are not alone, that Christ is walking with us no matter what we go through, and that that truly is a victory, and that through us, through each one of us, because we are marked and we are important, through us, Christ is seen in the world. And that is our task, isn't it, as we look ahead how are we going to share Christ? And by the way we talk, by the way we live, how will people see Christ alive in us? So as we get ready to leave, receive this benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace this day and every day as we go forward. And all God's people everywhere, both online and here, we all join our voices and say a rousing amen. <laughs>